to get through in terms of what he was saying there. Let's go to the former Premier League referee, Dermot Gallagher, again. Let's go in chronological order. The penalty, first of all. Any issue about the awarding of it and try and explain to us why it took two minutes and five seconds again. Right, I think it's a penalty, Steve. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Uh, what happens is Kevin Friend, the VAR, was looking at the different angles. The best angle was the angle from behind the goal, which clearly shows it's a foul. And that was the last angle he found. Once he'd found that angle, then they have to wait till it goes into a neutral area, which caused the problem because it didn't go there for a fair while. The minute it did go into that neutral area, um, he alerted Mike Dean he could stop the game, go back and award a penalty, which he did. And that's why we see Mike Dean clearly stop the game, signal the VAR, point back to the penalty spot. It was, that was the first occasion he could do it within that sequence. What, what is a neutral area? Is, do you... Where is it? Where is it? Where is a neutral area? It has to be, Al, where the referee or the, or the VAR decides that there isn't a direct attacking phase. And what happened is it went towards the bench area on halfway line. It was felt that that was the best place to stop it. That was at that, that point. I mean, it, it needs to be stopped sometime because we said it took over two minutes. And as you pointed out, half time. <laughs> you know, what can happen further down the line obviously impacts on the match and we don't want to see a second mm. offence occur. As we had one at Brighton last year where a penalty could have been given at one end. The referee didn't see it, we had no VAR. The ball went down the other end and the penalty was actually given to Burnley. Yeah. Which, which <coughs> nowadays you would have to disallow the penalty at one end, go back and give it at the other end, which never is going to sit right. Derm, I was just thinking, in this, if, if you are the team... Who, are, who might benefit from the fact that it is a penalty and you've got possession of the ball, why can't they just stop the game? Um, I suppose, Righty, the, the answer to that would be that that team can keep going. They're not convinced it's going to be a penalty because VAR wouldn't necessarily go to it. At that point, they're going to, they're going to keep attacking. You happy with that? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, because I'm, just, I'm just thinking because... It's up to the VAR to tell the referee that you can stop it now because we we know it's conclusively it is a penalty. You've got possession of the ball. It's not like they're going to say, "Oh, we wanted to carry on because we got the advantage." They've got a penalty, so they can stop it at any stage once you've got possession of the ball. That's what I'm thinking. Is I think it's something that needs to be looked at. Yeah, but um, the thing is that the VAR is never going to stop play immediately because he's going to check, and it's only once he's decided it's a penalty he can. Yeah. The players would never stop, righty, because. There's always a chance, as we saw yesterday at Liverpool, where the VAR said no penalty. And, you know, then if you stop playing, you think it's going to be a penalty and it's not given, you're going to be even more upset. OK, so the penalty was awarded two minutes and five seconds later. <laughs> Hugo Lloris saves it, Dermot. Then what do you think should have happened? Well, this is a big bone of contention, Steve, because um, you, sh you show me the picture that he's off his line. What's decided is... The on-field officials will make that decision during the match, unless it is so clear and obvious that the VAR will intervene and say, look, you must do. And an example given this season was Henderson a few weeks ago at Sheffield United, where it was felt that he was far too far off his line and therefore the VAR could have intervened. But I think with Larice on this occasion, it's up to the assistant who's down the bottom of your picture just out of shot to make that decision and relay it to Mike Dean. I mean, that, that is so close to his taking that shot. I think it'd be very, very difficult for that assistant to say conclusively that he was clearly off his line. Is that, is that, is that just new in then, rather than the on-field assistant or the referee to make that decision? Because well, there's, there's the, there, we're, we're looking at the assistant now. He's in a fantastic yeah. position yes. to see that now. Yes. There he is, it's and he's a yard off his line there. So can he not inform the referee, very much like he informed the referee when there was a come on, together, that he's got a book players? If you run this on, his right foot, you know, could be touching or above the line. It's very, very close. And he's looking for that to be past the line. I think in that occasion, I can understand why he didn't signal for a retake, because with a naked eye, he's got to be absolutely positive at the point of kicking that Lloris was off his line. I don't think he can be. So, so under what circumstances can VAR then intervene in this now? I think the one I quoted earlier, Steve, the Henderson one a few weeks ago at Sheffield United, where he's clearly off the line and the assistant didn't pick it up, that he can intervene on that case and say, look, trust me, this is well off the line. You can go back and have a retake. The only oh. other time, obviously, being if the player impacts, as we saw with Declan Rice on the opening day of the season. So just for clarity, it's still a subjective area, really, that? Very much so. Because... Uh, 
When you consider the, 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 the small margins in which they're giving offside de decisions, then I'm sure that he can have a look and see that his foot is not on the line when we're giving millimetres for balls across the line if it's past the goal, but like feet just the other side of offside. someone else's feet for offside. Surely we should be able to, he could be, from where he was, that's his job. His sole job is to look down that line and he think, I think he might be. He's, de he's got to tell the VAR, you've got to have a check of that because I think he's, he's off the line there, Dermot. They, they have to, if we're dealing with these margins. Yeah, but I think this is a great picture we're looking at here, right? If you look at that, yeah. Ian Huston's looking straight across that line at the goalkeeper. And that's his, in his peripheral vision, he's got to pick up Gundogan. And I think that's where the problem occurs because he's got to compute at exactly the point that Gundogan strikes that ball. And when you see that, his right foot is further back than his left foot. I think it's so tight that he can't tell at what point Gundogan actually strikes the ball and at what point the race goes forward. So, Dan, what's the, what's the referee doing? If he can't, the referee can do that, why can't he just do the line thing? Well, this is, this is the point at penalties, right? We've had this all my life growing up as a referee that I find it almost impossible as a referee to police this situation 100%. It, mm. it, it, it is. It's so, so difficult because you're looking for three things. And just to, before we move on, do either of you think that uh, that was a penalty second time and not mm. a goal kick? I don't think it was a penalty, no. I think he, he was very fortunate not to be sent off because... I think that you what think he was, was fortunate not to get a yellow card. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Sterling for, yeah. for going over when yeah, he Yeah, simply because I, I agree with Derm, like what, what he's saying at half time. I think that he realised that I just want to get to the ball and hope that I can initiate some contact to then try and get the penalty. And I think that's what he's, his mind thought. Well, I was. think the angles that we've been shown have been really poor in terms of we haven't seen a clear, definitive angle of it to say whether it was a definite foul or a definite dive. I don't know whether you've seen any different angles to what we've seen because I haven't seen a, a one that clearly gives us the opinion to say, yes, definite dive or definite penalty. Have you, Dermot? I haven't, Al. I've seen the same as you exactly. And I think that, that's why we'll always err on the side of caution because you don't want to make a decision mm. that you're not sure about. You know, it, it's, for me, it's impossible to say that's a definite penalty. And I think that's why we'll err on the side of caution for there. What, I what about Wrighty's point on Raheem Sterling? I, I am so, so... You know, there's definitely contact between the players. If a player's sent... I, I don't want to see a player sent off for that because, you know, as Al said, we haven't got a camera to say yes or no and that you're almost guessing there again, aren't you? Because you're second-guessing and I, I think the referee was best to leave it alone. OK. Nice. Now, you just heard Jose Mourinho say definite red card for Raheem Sterling in his challenge leading up to that. Did you agree or disagree with Jose? Uh, when I first saw the tackle here, I thought yellow card. When I see it again, the pictures are good and you think that could easily be a red card. What I think saved him, as I said at half-time, I think the fact he's stood up lowers the intensity. I think that was the key issue here, that um, the point of contact was on the ankle. You see here, as he stood up, he hasn't got the intensities when you see a player come in from distance and come in almost uh, horizontal, if you like, but that, that picture there does not look good at all. So is that a red card then for you? Um, I would have been very, very surprised if a red card wasn't given. That It would not have been overturned, I can assure you of that. So is that a red card for you? Well, I, I said, Al, I thought it was a red card <laughs> when I saw it the first time. <laughs> what did you think? <laughs> I think it's a very, very tough <laughs> call. Um, when you see some that have been given this season, I, under, I would understand if the referee chose or the VAR chose to give that a red card. I would err on the side of it being a yellow card more than a red card, but I totally un I would understand if, it, if the referee had given a red. I just think that where, he's, where his foot contacts, the, it's not gone over the top of the ball. It just feels like it's... Obviously, they're, 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 he's going at pace, but he doesn't seem out of control of his body. And that can happen in the aftermath of these foot rolling over the ball. I think if we're going to start sending people off for that, then <clears throat> we're going to have a problem because I think that he's not gone to do anything, which I've seen people do, try to go over the top of the ball and be nasty. Yeah, so just to clarify, if the red had been brandished, you don't think that would have been overturned by VAR? No, I don't. Mm. Um, I also think the other thing that um, was Ali just clipped the ball away just as he got there. Just as Sterling went to make that tackle, mm. Ali actually just nicked the ball. So it was a very, very tight call. Yeah. And, yeah. and the other instance you're talking about, 
I mean, Aubameyang was slightly different, wasn't it? At, oh, at Palace. Crystal Palace. I thought that that was he was reckless and way out. Look at that, way out of control of his body. You know what I mean? He's he's lunging. I think that when you looked at when you look at him lunging there, that's really dangerous. That one. I feel that when you looked at Sterling's one, he was closer. He was trying to get more contact. That one. He's totally out for me. He's out of control of himself. Mm. Um, with Aubameyang in that particular instant and. We know he's not a nasty player, but it's just the way it's happened for him. And this is Ben Godfrey um, that's, that's for a Norwich. That's a bad one. Mm. And um, I think that Callum Wilson is very lucky again. Look, his foot, he's, he's lucky. I think he's lucky there, right? His foot doesn't, he's not in the ground because I think that he, yeah. he probably could break his leg there. I agree. I think both of those were the correct decisions in terms of the players lunging in off the floor, not really in control of their, uh, of their body. Today was slightly different. Yeah. OK, so just to round up, you, you were happy with all those decisions today? Me? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think, yes, you, the ex-professional uh, referee. Sorry. Um, sorry. <laughs> sorry. So I, I think the two you've shown just um, reinforce what I said earlier, that Sterling was stood up and the other two, they're both lunging in. They're both chasing after the ball, aren't they, trying to get it back quickly. Mm. Uh, they're both going at a much more tempo, and I think that's why they got sent off, and I think that's why Sterling didn't today. Dermot, thank you very much indeed. I love you, Dermot. As <laughs> always, <laughs> very busy day for Dermot Gallagher in the match centre. We are still awaiting Manchester City reaction. We will bring that to you very shortly indeed. And we'll also look back on game one of the day, which wasn't quite as eventful <laughs> as game two, but there were a few talking points between Burnley and Arsenal. And we'll look at that when we come back next to you.